Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Now if you watched one of my very recent videos, you would have seen this absolute tragedy whereby I basically bottled a race in the last five meters and finished second after leading for most of it. Now, we can try to go one better. We can try to put the past behind us here at Catalonia. This is round number three or race number six of the Club 100 Esports Championship, which has been really good fun so far. And we arrive at Group 3 at a well-known Formula 1 circuit for what should be a very good race. Lights out, and away we go. Except some of us are doing that a little bit quicker than others, as Roswell jumps through from 14th immediately up to 12th. That Viper's got a really good launch, and he's already going to gain a couple of positions out of that. Now Roswald in the light blue Viper and Nathan in the green McLaren, as you can see there, are our main two rivals in the championship. I'm, I'm currently sat in third, those two guys are ahead of me. I'm going to jump up the inside here, try to gain some positions back. This is really important at the start of this, ra at the start of this race that I stick with those two guys and don't let them get too far ahead. Now ideally I would have stayed ahead of Roswald, we're going to try to go past him here on the inside of turn four. That will give him the uh, the inside for turn five, however, as he gets it there, and he jumps up the inside of Nathan, in fact, and jumps up two positions. So it's a good corner for him. So this race is a half an hour race in total, coming up through turn six, and oh, there's contact. Is it turn six or turn seven? One of them. And up the hill, unfortunately, I couldn't quite block this move. Dirty tyres from the gravel, no grip, Tim Clark goes through. So, started 13th, went down to 14th, bit of a bump draft there from our teammate Sam, and now sat in 11th. Look up the inside, didn't really want to go for this move, but it's kind of half happening, I guess. And then through the apex of 12, is it 12? I, I'm getting all my corners wrong, I'm just making them up now. I'm just going to start saying random numbers. Uh, so at the end of lap number one, Okay, we have gained two positions, I suppose, but the main thing here is that our main rivals, Roswald and NM1M, have uh, gained quite a lot of ground on us, which is not good. Uh, you see the, sh uh, the shuffling and the squirming up ahead. Now we're going to try and go through past Nathan, uh, not Nathan, uh, past Tim Clark here, both in Lexus machinery. So we head down into turn number one, get the move done. And that's pretty much as a textbook overtake as you're ever going to see in your entire life. As we then head into turn number three. Very long corner this one. And immediately settling back out to the left hand side before you get to the braking marker just before that bridge. Turn four. So we just need to close that gap to the cars in front. So for those wondering why, why we were starting at the back. Uh, the Sardinia race in one of the previous videos was the precursor to this one and um, this is a reverse grid so courtesy of finishing second in that race I start second to last in this one but there is half an hour within which to try to recover as many positions as possible so it's a fairly lengthy race we're looking at approximately 17 or 18 laps around this track with each lap being about 1 minute 45. Roswell looking for the move here into the hairpin. Just sticks the nose in and actually gets the move done. Martin giving him the space. And that overtake is rather cheeky, but it's, he did it. I'm going to try to follow him through here. Pick up the inside and hit this one. Not really the best place to go for it because it's not really much of a braking zone. And then a large knock-on effect here as I go into the back of Martin. Through the hairpin. Chicane, should I say. It looked like Peter Harris there having a bit of a spin. And in the red car, you might have just caught that through the chicane. Look at this, look how close it is now. As we end lap two, on to lap number three, deciding which side to go. Roswald with two cars between us now. We have to try to get past these guys as quickly as possible before he escapes. Into the distance. Does the space open up here? Yes, it does. Into turn three. So we can stick our car up the inside and take what is now 8th position so up behind Roswald, in fact he did not get ahead of the McLaren there of Jack he's going to have to wait a little bit longer is he going to try it here? I'm going to try to get ahead of him if I can, before he can jump ahead of another car and he goes for the late move, into turn 5 
and it's going to be done, is it? On the, on the exit. We get the move done on the exit. So a good move. I'm going to try to follow him through here. Not the most conventional overtaking corner. But we meet the apex and then there's contact on the way up the hill. Side by side now. Uh, up the hill into the long right at the top of it. And there's going to be contact halfway through the corner. We're going to be run slightly wide onto the gravel. And it looks like Tim Clark is going to appear on our right hand side. There he is. Oh, we do have the inside or the hairpin. And just keep P8. Oh my goodness. Exit stage left for Jack in the green McLaren. He goes flying off. 90 degrees to the left hand side. Says goodbye. Says hello to the grass. And rejoins a couple of positions down. Uh, so you see all of that fighting there has handed the initiative to Roswald. But more so to Nathan who is now up in third position. I'm still in seventh. So a lot of ground has been gained in these early laps. And you can really do a lot of damage in these races. I mean they say in fairly lengthy races that you can't win the race at turn one or on lap one. But sometimes you can, you know. Sometimes you can do a lot of damage on the opening lap, opening laps, uh, because of course we all start next to each other, but then the race fans out and everyone spreads out. So if you do a lot of damage early, then that does tend to help. Uh, so we've had a sort of a decent return so far, started 13th up to 7th, therefore gaining 6. But of course, crucially, our rivals are gaining a little bit more, but there's still a long time left. And I do feel comfortable around Catalonia. This track has come up a fair amount in the daily races recently, and therefore we've done a fair amount of laps. Just scanning ahead here to Marky Boy, who absolutely vaporizes himself into the Shadow Realm. Uh, don't we just love the self send? It looked like he got caught on the curb, and that does happen. You do get that bit of a curb glitch sometimes. You've got to be really careful of that curb, the entry curb, into that corner that he spun on. And. Um, Fortunately for him, he met his fate on this fateful day and moved down many positions. We go up into sixth place, up behind Kirith now. I'm going to try to surpass him. He's in the Aston Martin, which is very quick in a straight line. Maybe not the best after this type of chicane coming up here. Quite an awkward corner. When I say quite an awkward corner, I mean an extremely awkward corner. You get that one a little bit wrong and it just bumps you up in completely the wrong direction bit of a lottery at times uh, but now into the slipstream of Kirith we're not going to get the move done here because we are way too far behind and I do not fancy going for a ridiculous lunge from this far back but we will get a little bit closer which is something I'm going to try to size up a move a little bit later on in this lap he goes a little bit sideways there and well that opportunity came a lot sooner than I would have thought on the en uh, entry to turn number three which is, seems to be one of my favoured overtaking spots as you kind of get a wider run uh, going in to turn three and then get the uh, the cut back unless they just open up the space on the inside of the way in then you just go for it on the in on the entry so turn three good good for overtaking entry or on the exit as well now a lap later we're going to skip it forward a little bit here and you see the slipstream effect as i gain massively on roswald and in fact so much that i go into the back of him and uh, uh, slightly misjudged my breaking point a bit later on in the lap now we are at the end of lap 6 now I wanted to go for the two stop strategy here and we'll see what other people do so I'm going to bail out to the right hand side this is a crucial moment because we're going to see what other people do in terms of their strategy we're also going to see where I come out into traffic if we're going to do the two stop instead of the one stop the main problem of course is the fact that you you're stopping twice you have fresh tires for longer the race but you have to sometimes come out into slower traffic that is a problem now here yes that is going to happen crossing the white line right so now this is actually quite an ideal situation we came out in pretty much the biggest space in the pack so don't have to worry about anyone don't have to defend from anyone don't have to go past anyone so now I can just use these fresh tires to their absolute maximum which is ideal scenario number one let's try and do that let's maximize this this lap looks like Nathan's just coming to the pit lane judging by the 
the timing board on the left. Let's see how that pans out then. And in fact, look at that. We are going to come out neck and neck coming down into turn one on the brakes into the first corner. And there's contact as we go through. But I am just going to get ahead here as we exit turn two into turn three. This is what I mean about the exit move. He's going to try and keep that tighter line. And that gives him a run into turn four. I'm going to defend this one and then put him on the right hand side, make him go narrow. And if I can ride this one around the outside as we go side by side, good fighting between the two of us. I still have the inside line now for turn number five, so I can keep this position. But that was quite a big turnaround. It shows you that uh, the undercut, I went in a lap earlier into the pit lane, used the fresh tires, and I've gained quite a lot because he was a good three seconds, I would say, ahead of me before I went into the pit lane, maybe more than that. And immediately, he's lost three seconds. Now he's behind me as well, which is not good for him. It's good for me. I can slow his race down without compromising my own one too much. Not going to defend here. He was very close, but not going to defend it. Going to meet the apex and try to lap ahead as swiftly as possible. Because, of course, in this moment, we could defend, but... You don't want to lose too much time because you lose time to everyone else on the track every time you defend. And at the moment, we're just trying to maximise our fresh tyres compared to those who are on older tyres. So Tre Trevisio and Cal both go in. Roswald, interestingly, stays out. So it looks like he's going to go for one stop. As we do enter pretty much the halfway mark of the race, or near enough, halfway through this lap, we'll be halfway into the race. So up into third, you see two cars coming out of the pit lane there. That'll be Trev and Cal in the Mercedes and the Viper. So moving up into third place, Tim Clark there in second, Roswald in first, both looking like they're going to do a one stop. So an interesting scenario here where we have a mix of strategies, people go, going for one, people going for two stops. And let's see if they go into the pit lane. Yes, they do. So Roswald and Tim Clark both in at the end of lap number nine. This does mean we're going to take over the lead. It looks like Nathan not really making much of an impression. When I got him behind me there, I thought that he was going to fight me quite a lot. But it looks like he's dropped off slightly and not really fighting too much. Perhaps just to... He doesn't want to lose too much time fighting. So he just got the gap and just minimised tyre loss, uh, tyre wear. That could be a very clever strategy. Changing over to a one-stop, uh, possibly. But ultimately, that's good for me because I don't have to fight too much. I don't have to defend. So we're into the lead of the race, but let's not forget that we do have to pit one more time. A lot of these guys will not be pitting again. So we've gone for the more attacking strategy. And let's hope it pays off for me. We'll see. We're on lap 10 now. And uh, beyond halfway. So things are beginning to materialise rather nicely. So we did start in 13th. Always trying to aim for a top three, I think, in, in this group three race. Half an hour reverse grid, I think we can usually get a top three if everything goes to plan. That didn't go to plan at Spa, but that's because I'm rubbish in the rain. Come into the hairpin then. Lap number 10. And Nathan not, not yet making that impression that I thought he would. But like we just discussed, he may well be just, just holding back a little bit, preserving his tyres and just waiting for the moment to strike. As we enter the final sector, you probably thought I'd be sick of this game by now after doing 200 laps of the Nürburgring. But sometimes you do have to just log in and do the league racing because it's always good. And it's a video and it is my job, I suppose, to make these videos. So the job's not going to do it itself, is it? The game isn't going to play itself, so I need to actually do something. Right, lap 11 now. So I pit at the end of 6, probably going to pit at the end of 12. Nathan just getting a little bit closer now, so he's begun to assert the pressure that I thought he would do a little bit earlier on, and that's beginning to come now. But we all know that Catalonia, if you've watched F1 around this track, that overtaking basically isn't a thing. But in GT cars, luckily, you can overtake, and it's a bit different on a game as well, especially one with rather high slipstream, which does tend to assist the overtakes a rather large amount. So luckily, we're not going to be looking at an F1 ball fest here. Now, onto the mid straight, lap number 12. I'm going to come into the pit lane at the end of this one. Nathan looking for that move. 
I've blocked the inside. He's not any way going to go around the outside at the hairpin. So you can see the state of play here. So you can see the six, the top six there in shot momentarily. Nathan just behind on one lap fresher tyres. I'm going to bring my car into the pit lane in at the end of this lap. So boxing at the end of this lap. I'm going to keep to the right hand side here. Peel off to the pit lane for our second stop. And I was quite surprised that no one else did this. Maybe it is a bit of a brave strategy, but we'll see how this one pans out. Because I always felt like getting fresher tyres just feels so much easier to do. Now let's see how we uh, arrive back onto the track. Now you see there's a massive gap on the map. There's no one behind. There's about a 9 or 10 second gap to the car in 7th. Whereas I am now in 6th place. So this is where the fun begins because I'm on fresh tyres and we're going to attack. 7 seconds behind the lead. And we have probably 6 laps left. Fresh tyres. Cars ahead. Probably doing 1 stops. Not going to pit anymore. They're all going to be on old tyres. So this is where, yeah, as I said, the fun begins. We can attack, we can go forward, use up these tyres at the end of the race, try and gain as many positions as possible, see what we can do. Uh, so seven seconds off the lead, or less than now. At the end of lap number 13, catching up with Cal and uh, Tim, who are fighting over fourth position. And thankfully, thank uh, thankfully, I can't talk, thankfully, we managed to get into the slipstream. That's going to assist us slightly down this long straight here at Catalonia. Down into turn number one. Is there a way through here? Not quite. Go for our favoured move into turn three. No, not quite, because we closed the door. We're going to try and go for the move on the exit. Doesn't quite happen. I was quite surprised about this moment because he started defending. I didn't really see the reason why, because he's just costing himself a lot of time. And unfortunately for me, it's costing me a lot of time as well. I'm going to try and get past him as soon as possible. This is the this is the downside of the two-stop, which is that you lose a lot of time behind slower cars, which are on older tyres, and it matters a lot. So we're going to try and go for a move here, slam it up the inside, fresher tyres, should be able to break a lot later, have better handling capabilities as well. And boom, job done. Up into fifth, but unfortunately we lost, I, I would say about a second there, fighting. And that could be a crucial and fatal second. I hope it isn't. We'll find out. Into the hairpin then. Lap number 13. Next victim is Tim Clark. What we need to try and do here is try to get a little bit closer through this final sector and then get into the slipstream. That will give us a couple of tenths or three on the main straight. So this chicane here is crucial. It's crucial moments like this which really can pivot your race one way or the other. So let's see, are we going to be close enough as we come through the final corner? And I think we are just into the slipstream range. As we fast forward, you see that I do just begin to gain at the end of that straight. And now we can set our sights on trying to get fourth place on lap number 15. We are now about six seconds behind the lead with about four laps left to go. So this one's going to be nip and tuck. It's going to be rather close. Up the inside we go. And Tim did not fight that one. He just, I suppose he knew that we were on, that I was on fresher tyres. And by fighting it, he was only going to lose time. And sometimes you're just delaying the inevitable. Someone's on fresher tyres, you've just got to know. <laughs> it's probably not worth fighting sometimes. I move up into fourth. Up behind Trev in the Viper. Again, another one stop up. And we get past him as we head up the hill into turn number, I think it's nine. I'm going to go with nine. I'm sticking with nine. Right then. Here we go then. Into the hairpin. Good overtaking opportunity. Fake to the right. Go back to the left. Make sure you do not overshoot your braking marker from that narrow. And boom. Beautiful move. I managed to get the brake marker dead right. Hit the apex. And gain third position. Now we can set our sights on Nathan. And Ryan, who are in first and second, uh, what's the word? Retros no, not retrospectively. Um, I'll think of the word later. You're probably absolutely hounding me in the comments right now. Respectively, that's the word. Respectively. Okay, right. Went through the final corner. End of lap number 15, beginning of 16. Five seconds off the lead. 
two seconds away from Ryan. One lap later, four seconds off the lead, two seconds off of Ryan. And then one lap later, three seconds off the lead, two seconds off of Ryan. So I must say that both Nathan and Ryan did an incredible job nursing very old tyres on this race. They did not come in for another stop, another set of tyres. And I'm just thinking, would it have been possible for me to stay out and nurse a set of tyres for 12 laps? Maybe not. This would have been a... I'm just trying to think. Could I have done a different strategy here? Either way, it would have been very close, I think, whichever strategy I would have done. Final chicane, lap number 18. And it's going to be a third place. Disappointingly, I wasn't able to gain. These two guys just, just kept their tyres going. They kept their tyres going and my gains weren't enough towards the tail end of that race. It was still very close though, within three seconds at the end. And I just think that maybe a couple of fights through the traffic, if they didn't happen, I could have been within a second of, of the race win there. But that's the way it goes. I was just look, looking at this, right? Roswald and Nathan, you can see them there. Uh, light blue, Viper, the green McLaren. That's the state of play after lap one. This is the state of play at the end of the race. There wasn't much difference from the end of lap one to the end of the final lap. So I think we actually had a fairly similar race. The strategy probably was about the same. And um, sometimes that's just the way it goes. Didn't quite go my way that time, but it's still, as ever, a really fun race. And that is the main thing. That's the reason why we're playing. That's the reason why we're doing it. If you can't have fun, then there's no point. There are the results. Getting 15 points for that one. And uh, Nathan with a fastest lap. Once again, what does that do for the standings? Well, stayed in third. It's consistent, but it's not consistently good enough to be towards the top. Ryan and Nathan both running away slightly with first and second. And rather fittingly for Team Quadrant, we are in fourth. But that is the end of this one. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Stick around for the next one. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.